Does anyone like spiders? How many like devilishly cunning ones? How about devilishly cunning, extremely large spiders? That's what this is all about. Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Gone with Gandalf, where I discuss Middle Earth and beyond. If you are new here, then welcome. If you are a returning viewer, then you have earned a few more wasted minutes on my channel. I hope all is well with you. Uh, here is a video where we do some exploring into the history of your favourite arachnids in Middle-earth. Now the origin of spiders comes in at the end of the years of the trees, considering the War of the Ring began in Third Age 3018, this takes place about 7,000 years ago. An extremely long time ago, so only a select few elves like Galadriel or the wizards would have memory of this in Middle-earth. Ungoliant was the prime candidate for the title as Mother of Spiders. She hung out by the southern slopes of Dorthornion in the First Age, in a place just south of the Ered Gorgoroth that would be known as Nandungortheb, or the Valley of Dreadful Death, which gave any would-be travellers the hint to try and avoid it. Now, she found some smaller spiders there with whom she mated with to produce more disgusting spawn and ate some of them as spiders do in the real world. And one of her offspring was likely Shelob, who we know of in The Lord of the Rings quite well. But this wasn't Ungoliant's first, first haunt, so um, I'll go back to, oh, I'll go back in the timeline a little. So the years of the trees are so named because there were two trees, Laurelin and Telberion. They illuminated Arda before the sun and moon were made, which then kick-started the first age that led to the second and third. So Melkor was on his way out of Valinor, but wanted to leave a mark, so he found a great spider hidden in the dark mountains away in the far south, and that was Ungoliant. And together they plotted to drain the light of the trees, as that's what Ungoliant wanted to feed on, and Melkor was a naughty boy. <laughs> now, Ungoliant was from an unknown region to the elves, uh, called Abathar, uh, such that they assumed that she had come from the darkness surrounding Arda. Anyhow, Ungoliant drained the trees of their sap, and this caused her to grow in power and volume to make Melkor wary. So the trees then withered and died, but via a detour by Melkor to steal Vernor's Silmarils from his house whilst he was out, they then finally left for Middle-earth, which was to the east. Sorry, I had to think about that for a second. But then after getting to Middle-earth, shortly after, Engeliant wanted the Silmarils because they were nice and she loved the light that they possessed, so she attacked Melkor, but Melkor had an ace up his sleeve, and he called forth the Balrogs that had been hiding out uh, in Middle-earth since his defeat there a few years ago, and so they drove her away, and she dropped out of the main arc of the story as she headed then to Ered Gorgoroth. If you think I summarised that all right, Oh, if it makes sense, then uh, consider leaving a comment, because I'd want to know if I'm dawdling too long in getting to the point. Uh, so, thanks. Yeah, nice one. Great. But Ungoliant's end isn't decisively documented, however, about 600 years later, the whole land there, including Nandungortheb, was flooded by the Great Wave, and so Shelob and the rest of the spiders must have gone east by this point. And so over 6,000 years later, at the back end of the Third Age, Shelob finds herself guarding the pass of Kirith Ungol that the hobbits Frodo and Sam along with Gollum travel through. This does bring into question just how long these things can live for. It's clear that they aren't just everyday spiders. That guy crawling up the drain into your bathtub doesn't predate ancient Egyptian civilization. Hmm. However, Shelob wasn't controlled by Sauron, 
but was fed the odd orc to keep her happy since she was quite a useful tenant in guarding the back door, as you can imagine. So also to note though that Sauron had playfully mentioned her as his cat for this reason, although I would have I haven't really heard of a god cat before, but okay. No one's perfect. <laughs> had she met with Elven or Elvish? Uh, Trixers before the hobbits rocked up, then it would have been an extremely long time ago. So when Frodo eyed his Erendil all up in that uncanny man weaved thing around, it could have been over 6,000 years ago when the elves of the first age were fighting Sauron's boss on her mama's porch, uh, when she might have seen something like that. Although she didn't die to the hobbits, although it isn't actually known what happened to her after the destruction of the Ring and Sauron, but she probably scuttled off somewhere else. Now, as for the other spiders that were the spawn of either Ungoliant or Shelob, it was known that there were some in Greenwood the Great, later known as Mirkwood. These were probably brought along or helped by the taint of Sauron, who was consolidating his strength in the Third Age in the abandoned elven fortress of Dol Gurduk. Dol Guldur, excuse me, in the south of the forest. These spiders were responsible for capturing Thorin's company of uh, dwarves and Bilbo Baggins in the events of The Hobbit 2. Um, so that's the long and short of it. I tried to keep this nice and crisp and uh, neat, but uh, give yourself a pat on the back and a firm handshake for making it to the end of the video. Thanks. This has been Gone with Gandalf. Good day.